Greetings, dear Leo. That's you guys over here. This is Tarot Illumination, and it is your May 2019th mini generic love and relationship report. Okay, this is a very general, broad spectrum thing. I'm going to pull up a few notes for you from the Tarot Illumination Astro Doodles for the month. <clears throat> We're going to use the Tarot Illumination Crucible spread. It's on the understanding that there's you, a significant other, and a third entity, a living thing called the relationship itself, okay? <clears throat> Singles, if you want to, you can watch this. Just please allow for the laws of attraction and the energy of possibility and potential, okay? You'll see in a moment. Uh, watch for your sun, moon, and rising, please. Uh, it helps, and you can reinterpret later on. Invite your invisible friends. That's what we do here. Uh, it just makes it a richer, fuller experience. And uh, I want to show you a few notes for the month. There's just one, there's a couple, I'll just show you. Here we go. All right. So here at the basics, okay? May 2019, all month long, we now have Jupiter and Saturn and Pluto all retrograde. That's pretty heavy duty. If you have been a, feeling a kind of uh, very sobering, slow down kind of feeling in your life right now, across your whole life, as though you've been driving along big fat highways and all of a sudden the traffic gets thicker and thicker. There's orange cones everywhere. There's cop cars, uh, construction sites everywhere and signs blinking everywhere saying, watch out, watch out, watch out. And it can be very frustrating. OK, but we can learn a lot from this, too. OK, May 4th, the Taurus new moon. OK, that could be quite challenging for you. I'll show you in a moment. All month long, Mercury is just zooming along. It starts in Aries all the way through Taurus and then out through Gemini. May 15th, Venus is moving from Aries into Taurus. And also Mars is moving from Gemini into Cancer. I'm just giving you this. I'm not doing an analysis here right now. We might do that later on the other playlist. May 18th, this is the full moon. Taurus, Sun, Scorpio, Moon. I'll show you about that. May 21st, Sun moves into Gemini. For me, my perspective personally is that all month, the really heavy pressure of Pluto and Saturn in Capricorn retrograde around the 22 degree mark, that's going to be the real pressure point. Okay. And the thing is, it's probably going to be very hard to discern what this means because it's very deep energy and it's literally like you're almost like being forced against your will to go deeper and deeper and deeper within to the areas of your life where there might be a lot of karmic residue stuff that needs to be brought to the surface in order for healing okay so please allow for some serious discomfort in that regard but the whole point is that the planets are always working for you even when they're a challenging aspect okay i'll show you here's here's my best attempt to illustrate this this is the amazing terra illumination leo astro doodle uh, hot spots for the visible planets sun moon um, mars you know mercury sun moon mercury venus mars jupiter and saturn they're going to do all their thing there's a lot of like free flowing motion for the whole month but i'm focusing on the the hot spots uh in the middle of the month around may 18th we're going to have that full moon, the Taurus sun opposed by the Scorpio moon. So that's going to be in a pretty tough square to you. OK, it's going to affect you at the foundations of your life and your sense of destiny in the world. OK, and how does that affect you as a person? Because that affects relationships. Other people see you in different ways. Uh, another hot spot, Jupiter and Sagittarius retrograde. OK. So this is in your fifth house of true love, romance, fun, creativity, creative self-expression, like uh, being in love, the fun of being in love. And it's being challenged here. In other words, like, like, wait a minute, we need to review this whole department. Okay, because all the good fortune and uh, that you might have been enjoying or that you're used to enjoying or that you feel it's your uh, right to enjoy is deeply in question now, okay? The heaviest aspect of all is over here, particularly here with Pluto and Saturn and retrograde and Capricorn at 22 degrees. This is in your health sector, daily habits, purifications, rectifications, and just cleaning up day-to-day -day acts of life. And it's in opposition to the North Node. And so it might feel, to me, my interpretation here is that this is like 
an awful lot of pressure to go deep within. And it's almost like nothing to do with relationships, but it does affect you uh, in terms of your health uh, because uh, you need to be as healthy as you can in order to maximize and optimize the best that you can out of a relationship. So the retrograde happening over here is like a really deep pressure point. It's like going to the doctors and they're just putting, they're testing you all over, like probing for trigger points and pressure points. And then they find one, aha, aha. So is this where it hurts, dear Leo? If we found a trigger point here and you kind of go, oh yeah, ow, 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 that's it. And the doctors go like, aha, we need to probe further and deeper. And you go, no, 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 please, no, no, no. And there's nothing to support you over here. And so it's almost like there's unrelenting pressure. But the point is, please see it as a, as a, as a chance to reveal it, to heal it, because eventually things will come around and the, the, the sense will become apparent. And you can basically see what needs to be cleaned up and how and why inside of yourself so that you can get back to life and have fulfillment in love and relationship, okay? So there's a lot of, like, I, I think of this as like cleanup campaigns and uh, doing a lot of repairs and maintenance on the self, on the self, Leo, in order to get back in, this, in the groove again and get back to enjoying love and relationship. So please don't expect any miracles too quickly here. Let's get rolling. Cards are already well shuffled in advance, but I just want to go to the last second so that your link is okay. You'll see the crucible in just a moment. The crucible is a bowl type structure designed to withstand intense pressures that all of us have to endure in a loving relationship. Singles, you can watch this too if you want to. Okay, just allow for the laws of attraction and over the other party, consider that as potential energy. Okay, here we go. So this is you, Leo. What are you radiating now? Think of yourself like as a pulse, like a pulsing thing, like a like a like a radio or a trans transmitter or a transceiver, like a smartphone. Over here, what about the other? Over here, deep inside of you, deep inside of the other, and then to the core of the relationship itself. This is the bowl. Okay, you guys own this, whether you like it or not, or are aware of it or not. This is a living, breathing thing. You can't touch it. It doesn't have physical substance, but everybody is aware of it. Like if you're in a really toxic relationship and you have all sorts of associates, most of your associates will know that the relationship is toxic, even though you might be presenting yourselves as something different. So that's why I like to consider this as a completely separate living thing. And you own this. You guys own this. Over here, this is the weather. Over here, excuse me, uh, what is being fermented here? Okay. Uh, we're always in a state of intimacy and separation, uh, like a living, breathing thing, like in, out, in, out. What are, just like plants, okay? What's the weather like for you, okay, Leo? You have the two of pentacles, so my feet. <laughs> okay, so this to me looks like a very practical expression of what I was just talking about in this section over here, okay? No, it's almost like nothing to do with your love life at all, but this is very much to do with true love and your experience and joy in love and relationship over here. And a lot of this is in question. A lot of this is in doubt. So it puts you in a very precarious position. In other words, the circumstances, even though you're not getting absolute direct hits, you're getting it from all sides as though you're going through very stormy weather and you are being really challenged to maintain your balance, ma maintain equanimity, like be your own gyroscope, you know, how ships, huge, huge ocean liners and ships have these massive gyroscopes and things inside of them uh, to keep everything steady as the turbulence of the oceans and the journeys uh, around them. So in other words, the, the boat can have a chance to go like this, even though their energy is turbulent, instead of going, <laughs> okay, so your internal gyroscopes for you personally are under duress from uh, surrounding conditions, okay? So that does affect your love life indirectly. What are you radiating over here? Okay, so we have the Eight of Swords. So I feel you're being thrown deep, deep into like deep ocean turbulence where like you might not be prepared for this. You, no one might have ever like groomed you for understanding this or how to deal with all of this stuff. 
And so you can be feeling very uh, frightening in many ways. Uh, like, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm a Leo. <laughs> you know, I'm supposed to, by right, be happy and have fun and creatively self-express. What the bleep is happening to me? Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. So I look to the sixth house where all that Capricorn stuff is. I look to the twelfth house where that Leo, where that Cancer North Node is lingering, desperate for energy, and it's not happening. So it could make you feel as though you're way deep out in heavy storms, and that's just you trying to survive as you get through. And of course, that can impact love and relationship. Now, the thing is, I see this as turbulence, as passing energy. This too shall pass just like the planets are always in motion, just like the weather is always in motion. So yeah, we might be in a very, uh, I don't know, very challenging period for you right now, uh, Leos, and especially towards the middle of the month around the full moon. This right might uh, reach maximum pressure and you would be basically doing everything you can to, to navigate your way through very challenging circumstances. And it happens to affect relationship, right? Now, what are they radiating over here? Okay, the high priestess energy. Okay, so they might be off on a completely different tangent. Remember, this is not a couple's reading, okay, Leo? It's all about you and the other party. They can get their own reading, okay? Somewhere else, somebody else, uh, another tarot illumination uh, video or something. So we're allowing for them as, a, as, the, uh, as the supporting role a supporting character in your movie. Right now with the High Priestess here is that they are just doing exactly what they need to do to be themselves. And uh, it's almost like it's not a, none of your business. They're not even barely concerned about you in this situation. It's almost like they're like, they're almost like trusting you to understand that everything is going to be fine and that uh, you're going to have to intuit that you're going to have to use a lot of your own internal uh, senses, your own internal guidance system to figure out what's going on. And you're only going to be aware of what you need to be aware of, either by asking questions, deliberately being willing to uh, move forward gently and carefully, uh, very, very, very carefully, and asking questions. Or, uh, or and being prepared to hear answers that you might not expect. Also, be prepared to listen and almost like, it's almost like be aware that there's a lot that you can't possibly know right now or understand what's going on and it's too much for you. And that's why the planets are doing what they're doing. They're just grinding through, especially the, this thing here. This thing here is very deep, very heavy, very, very slow, and perhaps very uncomfortable, like a vice grip on this part of your life right now. 22 degrees Capricorn right there for you, Leo, okay? And that would touch your sense of health. Uh, like, like what's, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? But the thing is, okay, I don't want to hurt your feelings here, but there might be so much deep down stuff that is so hard to figure out and understand that you couldn't possibly figure it all out and understand it in like one tarot reading. So you have to deal with it gently. And so my feeling here is that it's almost like be grateful that you're relating with someone who is uh, going to be there for you anyway, whoever that might be in your life, Leo, where you will need to know what you need to know, when you need to know it, how you need to know it, and why and what it all means, and then you can figure it out. But this is very, very gentle, very, very slow energy. It would be too much. If like if this was like a, the tower or something, it would just be too much, uh, and, and you, your, your whole ship would tip over. So my feeling is here, uh, be aware that the other party is just being themselves, and whatever they need to be, whatever they need to reveal to you, they will reveal to you. Whatever you don't need will not be revealed. And it's probably going to be happening on a very subconscious level for them as well, because they're going through their own version of Pluto and Saturn uh, retrograde in Capricorn, 22 degrees somewhere for them. 
And who knows what their struggles may be, okay? Because it's the same intensity. It's a question of where is it lie for them in their life and their world. So you're only going to get what you can handle. Nothing more, nothing less. You will not be dumped with anything more than you can handle, okay? So in that regard, the heavens and the angels and the planets are on your side. It doesn't make this any easier being a Leo to get through this period, but uh, you will prevail, okay? Deep down inside, with the Prince of Cups, okay, this is to me a really good indication that you have only, only the best of intentions. Your only concern is to move forward with the most loving and purest of intentions uh, for the good of number one, thyself love thyself. In other words, there's an opportunity for you, Leo, here to learn a lot about self-love. It just might be an uncomfortable process uh, because it comes through the, um, the, the phenomenon of reflection uh, in relationship. So to me, it just looks like you're, you're holding on really, really tight to maintain your integrity, your harmony, your balance, keeping your gyroscopes in good shape, doing the work that you have to do, be knowing that you're navigating through very challenging complexities in your whole life, not just love and relationship, your whole life. And it's profound. It's almost overwhelming, but it isn't. It's almost, but it isn't. And you are navigating, going forward, almost against all odds, with the most loving of intentions knowing that love prevails, okay? You, knowing that the healing power of love dominates everything from up above. You just have to ask for it. I, I Literally, this is almost like a prayer. This is almost literally getting to the point where you feel brought to your knees by all of this, to the point where I, I've, never, I've never done this before. I've never actually got down on my knees and asked for my angels to help me. Dear angels, dear, dear angels, I ask you, I ask for the healing power of love to fill my life from up above. I ask for the healing power of love to fill my soul from up above. I ask for the healing power of love to fill my heart from up above. I ask for the healing power of love to fill my mind from up above. I ask for the healing power of love to fill my physical body and my whole world from up above. Now, more than ever, I am very, very humbled to have to do this, but I am doing it. Thank you very much, dear angels. Please listen to my prayer. Over here, what about deep inside of them? The three of wands. <laughs> as far as they're concerned, they're totally uh, on path here, uh, just moving ahead the way um, they have to. And yes, they might be aware that you're going through a lot of turbulence right now, uh, being deeply challenged, maybe like... When I talk about these things here, where there might be an awful lot of, uh, let's say, issues that you own, no one own else owns of. It's very karmic stuff. In other words, it's like debts from the past. Uh, I'm not just talking about financial, but debts of all kind, over uh, uh, where. Uh, like you never clean it, you know how people never clean up as they go along. It's actually very hard to live a very pristine, pure life where you clean up every mess as you go along. But all I'm suggesting here is whatever messes were not cleaned up in life up to this point are going to become gently but very firmly exposed so that can they have the revealing for the healing because that will improve your chances for love and relationship. The point of maximum pressure will probably be around the 18th, okay? So please allow for that on your calendar, all right? And as far as the other party is concerned, they are staying on path directly. Uh, now it's almost like none of this is surprising to them. They're having to maintain their own integrity. They're maintaining themselves at the highest frequencies they possibly can, because again, they're going through their own stressors. So don't take it personally, okay, Leo? They are seeing it's almost like they're seeing what they need to see in their life uh, being manifested and coming to them. It's almost like they, they want this. It's almost like they want this for you. It's almost like, to me, it feels like joy. It's just like in a very, uh, like sounds 
totally counterintuitive. It's almost like, this is what I really want for you. This is how I can truly serve you. By being your mirror, by reflecting back to you, or being the image has a reflection back to you of what you need to know about you that needs to be cleaned up deep, deep, deep inside for reflens, re, <laughs> refining and cleansing and purifying. So please, deep down, it's almost like I am actually doing what's best for me and what's best for you. Please understand that. I'm sorry about all the pain that you're dealing with right now. There is no intention of any harm. Everything is exactly as it should be. You will only discover what needs to be cleaned up and clarified and purified and understood as and when you can handle it. And you will handle it because that is your heart's intent. There is no harm intended here anywhere. Let's have a look at the core itself. We have the chariot. Oh, look, to me, this is beautiful. It all, to me, it's just like, you know what happens when uh, they talk about the planets when they're in very challenging alignments like this? Yes, they're very challenging, but this, these are the real uh, pressure points which can trigger the energies of um, evolution, adaptation, and growth so that we can blossom. In other words, it's like growing pains, a lot of growing pains going on here towards the middle of the month, okay? And so that what that does, it puts a lot of pressure uh, on the relationship, which is owned by you and the other, uh, to get it together. And it is a team effort here, but uh, and this is not a couple's reading, okay? It's all about you, Leo. So I'm seeing this as uh, like a, the burden of responsibility here is to realize that this relationship, whoever it is, whatever the nature of the relationship or the context of the relationship, uh, a significant other in your life, it's really and truly for your benefit because the whole sole purpose of the relationship is to expand and clarify and understand all the things that are completely and wildly out of control uh, inside of you, your life, your world, everything that needs to be brought under your control. You literally need to take a grip of this and bring it in alignment with all the good stuff of you already, Leo, that you already own, okay? You wouldn't be going through something like this unless you could handle it. Yes, there's a lot of pressure, but your, intense, uh, your intentions are very good. And it looks like you have someone or someone close by who's really there for you, but it's in a way that doesn't necessarily translate into a very romantic thing because even the romance is being challenged right now. Nevertheless, the relationship has value, all right? Let's have a look. What is fermenting here? Okay, see? To me, it's almost like an act of magic where you get this moment of realization Oh, no, it's not even a moment. It's like a gentle, gentle realization as you go through May, especially right towards the end of May, uh, when we're getting into, I think, what it is, it the Gemini season, and things will soften up a little bit for you, okay, just a little bit, and you come out of May thinking, wow, I did it. I did it. Terror elimination, guess what? I did it. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I asked for this. I got it. What I really, really wanted is to discover more and more accurately what is the definition of love? What is the definition of happiness? What does it really and truly mean for me? Because that's what I really want. I want to be happy. Being happy can often translate as having something very delicious and satisfying in love, but that can't happen until we are happy deep down from within. So in a very convoluted way, I'm hoping, Leo, that you understand that what the reading is all about here is almost like, oh my gosh, I, I knew this all along. I just, I just needed to hear it from somebody else. Like, this is the pathway to happiness. Yes, it's very tough. It's very, very scary. Yes, it's work. It's challenging. And you're learning through the reflection coming at you from a significant other who would be like the embodiment of all the challenges that you need to endure, but they're just a mirror, okay? You can't blame them for everything that sucks in your life in love and relationship, okay? Because you are you, they're themselves, and the relationship is its own thing. 
And I don't think that there, there's any harm intended here. And uh, the only possible outcome is happiness. And then learning, learning what does happiness mean now? Oh my gosh, I never knew. And you get a taste for it. And once you've had that taste, it's like, ah, oh, there's no going back now. Aha, it was worth the pressure, okay? Normally, I talk about how we intimate, how we separate, how we intimate and separate. This doesn't seem to apply at all for me. From the way I'm reading this for Leos, it's all about your own personal journey and just getting through the month, okay? Very challenging times here for you, but you're coming in with big love, big, big heart energy, and it serves you. Mm -hmm. Love thyself. Please be grateful for the significant other. I am going to pull an oracle for you. And I hope this helps a little bit. I'm just going to tuck all this over and give myself a bit of room. This is for fun. I'm not even going to read the book. I'm just going to pull the card. I love this deck. She has lots of decks. There are thousands of decks out there in the world. And I only use a few on the channel. And I particularly like this one because it really has stood to the test of time. So I'm going to do it. Normally, I very rarely offer oracles, but I think maybe it's time. Okay, so for you, Leo, I'm going to just pull one. And hopefully this will be like a little treat at the end of the reading. You know how at the end of like when you leave an Indian restaurant or something, they're always giving you mints and something to sort of cheer you up, you know, some kind of little farewell treat. That's what this is all about. And so it's almost like it doesn't even matter what the card says. It's really more about the gesture and uh, accepting the gesture is simply a gesture. We only mean well here. All we want for you, Leo, is to be happy. Okay in life, not just love and relationship, but in life, okay? You are the light, you are the shining light, you are the one who is supposed to uh, radiate happiness. So that's what we're working on here. We're gonna get you as uh, finely tuned as possible. So that has the maximum chance of happening for you, including in love, okay? So let's cut it all up, right? Let's cut this up. And we're going to simply pull the top card, and I'm just going to read it for you. Okay, it says here, past life relationship. Okay, you have known each other before. So I think this relates very, very closely with the deep soul examinations that are going on here in these sectors of your life. Okay, true love and romance over here. I think, like, whatever kind of relationship dynamics you have right now, Leo, whether it's, there's something that exists right now or that's in the blossoming or that already existed but it's withering no matter you can see it now it's like oh my gosh now i'm understanding the bigger picture these retrogrades as uncomfortable as they might be are actually here to help your soul grow and then once you see it from this kind of perspective instead of thinking like well wait a minute it should have been this way or that way then it isn't so painful so if you think of the situation as you have known each other before and what's actually happening is at the soulmate level going through the deep cleanup campaigns and the deep karmic understandings that have existed in a previous love relationship in another past life that were never resolved, that were never ever cleaned up. And now we're getting into it in this lifetime. So like the karmic cleanup, okay? This is like literally like... Uh, karmic cleanup campaign, okay? In other words, uh, we were talking about earlier about like, cleaning up as you go. So whatever leftovers uh, or messes were left behind in past lives you know, or in, in this particular past life relationship, uh, this is a chance now to really, really clean things up, really, really clean it up. And that's good for you. It's good for the other. It's especially good for you uh, and getting forward in your life and getting back to happiness again, okay? All the best, Leo. I hope you get something out of it. Share and uh, don't forget to subscribe and like and all of those things. Uh, check out the links below for all those other goodies. All right. Bye bye. Love doing this for you. Bye bye. See you guys again soon.